Hey, it's Mark coming to you from Baker Street Acres. This is a follow-up on a video that we did, or I did, in June, and I believe I titled it Hog Heaven. And what it was, it was one of the projects that we embarked on for this season, 2015, with our mangalitsas. Um, as you can see, they're over here chowing down. I just got done feeding them. It's a sunny day. We've had about five days of rain. And so where I am right now in their area is, is very muddy. But it's muddy for other reasons than just the rain. Um, adjoining fields are not muddy. This field has two springs that dump out on it. And this field, a little, little uh, history lesson on this field from the, the owners, the original owners... Um, as you can see behind me, there's a pond, right? And the original owners, in order to utilize this field, wanted to drain this land. So they had German prisoners, prisoners of war, um, you know, and this was in, in the 40s, you know, during the World War II, and they were digging ditches here. That's what they used them for, to try and drain this land. Actually, that field over there is the result of this being drained. That is high now and it's dry enough that you can drive on it with equipment to uh, cut hands. But what I want to point out here, when we started this project, this was heavily covered with, see these, these small trees are bulrushes. And wherever you have those, you have a lot of undergrowth and it was just thick and dense. You couldn't really see where the springs came out, but they've uncovered that. There's, there's several locations. There's one right here behind me. That's where that comes out from the side of the hill. And then there's one up closer to the corner. And um, they've taken everything off of here that's edible, pretty much. So I'm having to feed them. Now the beauty of this whole thing is all this forage that was on here They've turned it into the highest quality pork that you can get in the United States right now. And it didn't cost me anything. And at the same time, they opened this up so that I can come in here and I can actually utilize this land for them specifically. So what I did the other day when it was raining and I didn't have <laughs> much to do. I came down here with a, a spreader. It's it's a it's a very small spreader. It hangs around your neck and you crank. We call it a whirly gig. I don't know what it's really supposed to be called or an organ grinder type thing, but it'll throw seed. And I had about 20 pounds of turnip seed. And now it, today it's uh, I don't know. It's like 65 degrees. And it's beautiful out, but it's like November something or other, second, third, fourth, I don't know, today's Monday. <clears throat> so we're not going to get any growth on those seeds, but I, I spread out 20 pounds of seed just in this under area, under these trees and stuff. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put turnips under the trees, and I'm going to go a little further out, and I'm going to put tree foil, and then a little further out from there, and I'll plant some clover and uh, some field peas out there. Now I can plant seeds this time of the year because I know darn well I'm not going to get any growth. If I did get any growth as soon as it gets real cold it would nip them right off. But these seeds will just sit in this cold mud until next spring. The pigs will be coming off of here soon because this is too far away from the house and there's way too much snow. Um, down here for me to battle to get down here and feed all the time plus the it's The distance is too far at this point, you know at some point We'll probably have housing down here for them, but we have no housing in here for them and So they can't be here most of these ones will go to slaughter and some of the smaller ones will go up on The market garden which I want to show you that today, too. I want to catch up on some stuff I get really motivated when the Sun comes out um, I th the beauty of of YouTube is I get really excited about what I accomplish and I want to show it 
So it's, it's really cool. It makes me feel good to be able to show it to you all. It's a really cool thing. So this field is actually going to become a grow system as well. Here's a field that has not been tilled because it's so wet. So the fertility here is unbelievable. You know, this is like virgin ground. It will grow turnips like nobody's business. The turnips will loosen the ground up. Um, I don't know how these cedars will do. If they don't do well, that's okay because they make excellent fence posts. At some point, we might replant some other type of tree in here that does well in wet ground and will give us some sort of something back. You know, if we have some sort of tree that drops, you know, apricots or, I don't know, oranges or something down here. I'm not sure what it will be. It would be nice if we could get a jump start on some oak trees, but they take a little kind of a long time. It might work for my grandkids. But we'll see. Um, we're researching that right now. There are some hybrid oak trees that will actually drop in five years. So who knows? Maybe we have to do that. I don't know if they do well on this type of soil. We'll have to look into it. But it's a really neat thing because we have water here. We have two springs that come out from the side of the hill. Um, the reason it is so wet right now, uh, if you could see where I'm standing, I'm looking up towards the house and it's probably elevation of about 50 feet. All right, so this is a way downhill slope. And those springs get augmented by any kind of rain that we have. So um, they don't go out on our dryer fields, they dump out on this field. And that's why this is just so wet. Okay. Bad thing? Yeah, if you want to put equipment on it, it's bad. One of the stories about this field was when I first moved here, I came out on this with my little 45 horsepower tractor and I got stuck. So I had to go to my neighbor, Jack Vandree, to get me unstuck. And it was about the fourth time I'd had to call on him to get me unstuck. And here I am, some dumb Air Force guy that wants to be a farmer. And he says to me, you know, I got stuck on that field back in the Ford. Well, it must have been the 50s. And he said that the original landowner was still alive then, said to him, you damn fool, I don't even go out on that field with my mules. So I've never forgot that. We don't come out on this field with uh, our tractors anymore because you can, you can lose them. <laughs> you know, they'll wind up under the mud. So we don't come out here at all. Um, I'm walking now and it's, it's muddy. I would never bring a vehicle out on here unless it's frozen. Even then, <laughs> I'd be careful. The pond, because of the springs, uh, it's not real solid, you know. Uh, this pond, they tried to drain it off, and that was the purpose of the, the Germans doing the ditching. But, um, you know, it's, it's filled in. And I, what's interesting is the pigs seem to have a, a good relationship with the waterfowl that comes in. They'll be out there together. And the pigs will go into the pond and they'll they'll get cooled off and uh, you know there'll be ducks all around them and they don't seem to have a problem with each other I think they kind of get along good there's some sort of symbiotic relationship uh, okay well that's it I'm gonna sign off and uh, next time you hear from me it will be on the the top project the summer project the uh, market garden all right Mark from Baker's Green Acres signing off <laughs>